Right now we're going to talk about an exercise series called Roccobato 6. This is something that's great if you have any sort of TMJ dysfunction, where it's dysfunction of that temporomandibular joint or your jaw. A lot of people know if they have it or suspect that they have it. It's definitely a good idea to still work with a physical therapist to make sure that that is the source of what is going on and make sure that these exercises are the right fit for you. But these are one of my favorite ways to work on this with people. So as you may have guessed, this is a series of six different exercises. The original protocol calls for doing six repetitions of each of the six exercises six times a day. That's a lot to keep track of and a lot of times throughout the day to try doing it. So I generally recommend trying to do maybe 10 to 15 reps two or three times per day of each of the six exercises. So here's the progression of all of them. Some of them are kind of weird seeming, but they do all serve a purpose when it comes to all of this. So first of all, we're going to do what is called clucking. This is exercise number one. So for clucking, what you want to do is keep a relaxed jaw and you're basically trying to make a sound with your tongue and your mouth like this. That's it. So each one of those is one repetition. So that is the clucking exercise. Exercise number two is an open and closing exercise. With this, again, you want to think about keeping your jaw nice and relaxed, your lips softly parted, you're not trying to purse your lips and you're not letting your mouth just hang open. And then what you're trying to do is get the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth, but sort of the front part, kind of just right behind your teeth. So you're gonna put your tongue there and then gently and slowly Open your mouth as wide as you comfortably can without losing that contact with the roof of your mouth and then bring it back to your resting position. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. Okay, so that's exercise number two. Exercise number three, you're gonna be providing your own resistance to your jaw and the muscles around your jaw. So what we're gonna do with this is try working in some different directions. We know that our jaw can open and close, obviously, and then we can also make our jaw kinda of go side to side, like that. There are some other directions it can go to, but for the purposes of this exercise, this is where we're gonna focus. So what you're trying to do is, again, keep your mouth and jaw in sort of a relaxed starting position. You want your lips just gently together, not pursed together, and you don't want to be clenching your teeth. From that position, we're going to try to open the jaw, and we're also gonna try moving it side to side. The trick is we're using our hands to block any of that motion. So here's what it looks like. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm trying to open my jaw, but I am using my own hands to block that. So it shouldn't look like much, but what I'm trying to do is this, but I can't because my hands are in the way. I'm gonna do the same thing with side to side. So I'm gonna try using my hands to push my jaw one direction, but I'm using the muscles of my jaw to keep it right where it is. And then going the other way. So again, you don't really see the jaw move at all, but I'm trying to keep it in place while my hands are trying to push it one way or the other. So that is exercise number three. For exercise number four, we're actually gonna use a towel. I have a hand towel, but you can use a bath towel as well. And what this is trying to do is just block your neck as you do a motion with your head. What we find is there's a huge relationship between how the jaw is functioning and how the neck and upper spine are functioning. And so that's why we start getting into some of these other motions with this. So what you're gonna do is take that towel, put it right behind your neck, just kind of near the base of your skull, so fairly high up. You don't want it real low down on your neck. And I'm just going to gently pull forward. And as I do that, I'm just trying to extend my head over top of it. So this should be a relatively small motion. I'm not letting my head hang back completely. I'm just blocking my neck and doing whatever my upper spine can kind of do from that position. Real nice and gentle and just hold for a couple of seconds back there. So that is exercise number four. 
exercise number five is to exercise and strengthen a muscle that sits on the front side of your spine and is really, really deep and relatively small. As you do this exercise, you're probably not gonna feel much of anything happen, especially up in this front area, but it's still a good thing to do. Basically what you wanna do is called a deep neck flexor. So with this, you're going to be standing you can do this up against a wall for a little bit of other feedback, or you can even do it lying down. But you're going to think of sitting up really nice and tall with relatively good posture, and then you're basically just trying to give yourself a double chin. So you're just trying to slide your head back onto your neck. So it looks a little bit like this. And so you can see that there's just a little bit of a tilt of my head as I do that as well. So it's almost like I'm thinking of having an orange or something here that I kind of want to press down on just slightly. I don't want to just hang my head and I don't want to move my head way back. I'm just sort of rotating on the top part of my skull meeting my neck. So that's exercise number five. Our final exercise, exercise number six, is to work on some of the muscles back around the shoulder blade. And you may have seen this in some of our other videos as well. But what we're trying to do is just make sure that we've got some of those muscles in the back area of your upper back and along your shoulder blade working the way that they should be so that we're maintaining some good posture and not getting super hunchy and having weird things happen with our neck and our jaw and then contributing to some of the jaw dysfunction. So what we're going to do is just think about, again, nice tall posture, and then we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades gently back and together. Now, as I do this, I am not trying to stick my chest out. Everything stays still and it's just my shoulder blades moving as I gently squeeze back. With this, it should not feel like it's creating a lot of tension or strain through the front of your shoulder. If that's the case, you may be squeezing back too hard or letting your arms kind of get into it. Just let everything stay really nice and relaxed as you do this exercise. So give these a try. Like I said, you wanna work through all six of these exercises, doing about 10 to 15 repetitions, two to three times a day. And hopefully that starts to help you some with any jaw pain.